Welcome. Welcome to the crossing. Hey, while we're clapping, let's give it up for South Shore. Welcome, South Shore. Great things going on down there. Great things going on all over at the crossing. God is doing some miraculous, just phenomenal things. If you have not been able to make it to uh, prayer on Wednesdays at noon, I encourage you to, to take a vacation day. Uh, I'm not going to say call in sick because that'd be lying, but maybe you're sick of work. I don't know. Uh, that might work for you, but uh, I encourage you to make it. Take your lunch break. Come out. Believe God for some great things. We're seeing God just do some phenomenal things all over at the crossing, and I'm just I'm excited to be a part of it. Are you excited to be a part of it? Yeah. All right. Me too. Me too. Um, We've, uh, Pastor just uh, wrapped up a series on identity, and uh, you know, it was really good stuff. I encourage you to go back and listen to it again and just make it part of who you are. And, and you know, I'll do this every time I speak because I really do believe it. And I believe that we have some of the greatest pastors, and I love them. And don't we love them? Let's give it up for them. We love you, Pastor Greg, Pastor Tamara. Enjoy your time all. Um, so they'll be back next week, and uh, he'll be right back in, in the pulpit bringing the word again. So look forward to that. Now, as I was coming up on this weekend, I had had a, I had a message that was, I had been kind of mulling over and thinking about and, and looking at, at doing. Um, and uh, a few weeks ago, Pastor Greg, myself, and Pastor Curtis, the, who's the other executive pastor here, here at the crossing, and uh, we, had a, we were having a conversation about what God was doing here at the crossing. And uh, you've heard Pastor Greg refer to it a couple times here on the platform. And the subject we were talking about, Pastor Greg, was, he said, I feel like the people of the crossing are just right at the edge of seeing God do some really miraculous things in their life. And, and it's just like they, they, they need to take this, this one more step and they'd be in it. And he, he said, and as we got to talking and uh, about different things that, that could be the the peace that's needed, we came up, we, we, we started talking about expectation. And uh, in my past, I've done a lot of study on, on faith and expectation. And, and uh, so I began to share what, I, I, what I've discovered over time uh, with expectation. And, and in the meeting, he said, he, he said man, can you, can you give me all your notes? Can you compile that and send it to me? So I said, sure, I'll do that. And it's been a while since I really dug into it. And I began to compile those notes to to send to him, and as I was, I got inspired, and I, was, I called him, I said, man, can I preach on it? He said, please do, please share, because, you know, what you have, you can give, but if you don't have something, you can't give it. We'll talk about that in just a minute, um, but, but God has, has, has given me great expectation, and some of you also, so that's how today came about, and I really believe there are messages um, in uh, Christianity, we come to church for several reasons now, um, but one is we receive a word uh, from God that helps us grow in life. There are pastoral messages which uh, help uh, correct things that we do in life and get us back on track and headed in the right direction, uh, or they encourage us and nurture us and, and help us move forward in life. There are uh, words of encouragement, that it's an encouragement in our lives, and then there's, there's teaching that is digging out the Word of God and helping us understand the nuances of God's Word, but then there are prophetic teachings um, that's not necessarily someone standing up here and calling out individuals. That's prophetic also, but there are prophetic teachings that will remove things out of culture, almost like a block. We'll remove things out of culture that aren't what God wanted there, and, and we'll replace those things with what God wants in our culture. And I believe that today's message is one of those. So I, I encourage you to take notes. Um, <clears throat> And really look into it, you know, and, 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 and just pray about it. Let it get in your life. Receive it. And I think God is going to place it in our culture at the crossing so that when people come immediately as they become acclimated to who we are, they, they get it. It just becomes part of them. That's what happens in a culture. We, 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 we have norms that we live by. And when people come, they just get in those norms and flow with us. So it's things we, we teach at one point and it becomes part of us. And we don't really have to visit it uh, you know, very often again. So before we get into it, let's pray. and Because uh, God has to do his work. And I'm going to do my part up here, but God has to do his. And nothing can be done without the Holy Spirit doing his work. God, I thank you for your anointing, for your power. I thank you for your presence. 
I thank you, Lord, that you, you speak to each one of us where we are in our lives and, and in who we are and who you've designed us to be. And God, I ask in Jesus' name that you would move among us, you would speak to us, you would help us grow in who you've called us to be. I command our hearts to receive, our ears to open, and our hearts to receive the word of God planted in us. I bind away every hindering spirit that would try to stop, stop the move of your spirit in this sanctuary this morning and across the airwaves down at South Shore and online and, and on the on-demand video. I, I, in Jesus' name, we bind those hindrances away, and Lord, we loose the power of your Holy Spirit to move among us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now... Just know this, your miracle, whatever that may be, breakthrough, deliverance, healing, promotion, whatever you're believing God for, your miracle is directly connected to your expectation. You know, you pretty much get what you expect in life. Have you ever been around people who, you know, who constantly say, you know, I, I, I'll never get that job, you know, and, and you see it work out in their life, they never get the job. Uh, the reason being is because they speak something out and then they begin to live out what they're speaking. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, uh, you know, we may have those relatives or, or people that we're close to who say, I always date the wrong person. And they always seem to date the wrong person. Does anybody know anybody like that? All right, all right. I judge from the laughter. Yes, you do. Uh, I hope you're not that person. If you are, begin to expect something different. Because what you expect is what you get. You know, you run upon people who say, you know, I'm always broke. Well, it doesn't matter if you give them a million dollars today. In two weeks, they'll be in more debt than they were before they got the million dollars because they speak over themselves that, hey, I'm always broke. You know, they, they get what they expect. And all throughout life, we get what we expect. If we walk into a job interview believing that we're going to get the job, confident about who we are, then that confidence and, that, and what we believe begins to take over the atmosphere around us and we get the job. If we believe that, good, that things are going to work out for our good or, or, or whatever we're believing for, we usually get. And, you know, uh, uh, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And social scientist Robert Merton uh, discovered that when people speak something out over their lives, they adjust their behavior to act out what they expect. So, it's a, it, you know, some of us, for some people, uh, the light just went on and said, oh, oh, sociologist, you know, social scientist, that scientist said it's true, so it must be true. And it, you know, I, it, it really, it's a sad day in America when we just don't take God at his word and we have to have a man back up what God says because God said life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we, should, we as Christians should be able to take him at his word. But the, there's been a diluting of Christianity in America to the point where we don't even really believe the word of God. We have to have some man back it up. But God's word is true. And, and, and I promise you, if we believe it, and whether we believe it or not, God's word is true. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And remember, your miracle is directly connected to your expectation. So what you expect is usually what you're going to get. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through a couple of scriptures today that are going to show you that. And as I began to prepare for today, you know, as pastors and speakers, we, we have, you know, ways of preparing messages that keep people engaged, that interject humor, that, you know, keep people awake in, early in the morning and that kind of thing. And I began to put one of those messages together and God said, no, put that aside. I want you to just walk them through the scripture. I was like, okay, well, we're going to do it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through Scripture. So we're going to read a lot of Scripture today, and we're just going to kind of dissect it and pick it apart and uh, show you what God is saying through it. So in Mark 5, 24 through 34 is where we're starting. So if you haven't had your Bible reading today, you're about to get it. But this doesn't count, so you've got to go read your Bible for yourself. <laughs> okay, so a large crowd followed and pressed around him talking about Jesus. And a woman was there who was subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now, the King James said it's a, it was a woman with an issue of blood. And I know you, none of, I mean, you can't imagine a woman with an issue, I know. but Now, come on now. If Pastor Michael can tell an STD joke, I can tell that joke. <laughs> she, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I got a little tickled on that. <clears throat> but she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she got worse. 
When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I can touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Now, I love the response of his disciples here. They said, you, know, they said, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched me? Like, Jesus, come on, man. There's like 500 people around you, and you want to know who touched you? Come on. The, pro- the thing was, there were a lot of people touching him, but nobody really touched him except for one. And she came in and touched him because she expected something the others weren't expecting. They just looked at him as a good teacher, but she knew he's the Messiah. He's the one that can heal me. He has an anointing that can change my life. Said, But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Now, I want to I talk to you a little bit about this lady. Because this lady had been suffering for 12 years. And in that society, that culture at that time, the Jewish culture, if if someone was sick, they could not be around other people. So for 12 years, this lady has been isolated and by herself. Obviously, she had money. She had some money to be able to spend on doctors and, and trying to be cured over this 12 years. And no doubt she had been to the priest and the priest to the religious system of the time. And, and in that religious system, they gave you uh, specific steps you could take to be healed from, from certain things. And if you look back at it now, we know those specific steps that were taken were, were, were just natural cures for what, whatever was ailing people at that time. I said ailing. I am from Georgia. So... Um, so what was making them sick at that time, but she had been isolated and she had, had been by herself and rejected from society and from the people that she loved. She couldn't even be around them. She couldn't, couldn't, couldn't have, have a relationships with them. For 12 years, this woman was pushed aside and forgotten and not allowed to be around people, but she heard about Jesus. She heard about him raising the dead, healing the sick. She heard about him walking on water. She heard about him, all the mighty works that he was doing. She heard about him, and hope was sparked in her heart again. And she began to believe, and she said in herself, if he comes around, if I can just touch his clothes, then I will be healed. She began to to have faith that her, her life would be changed and to expect an encounter with Jesus that would transform her life. She began to expect it in such a way that that. That, that hope began to live in her heart again. And then when he came to town, she could have been going on about her business like she wanted to just go about her business every day. But, but when you begin to expect something, things change in your life. Much like a pregnant woman, when, when a woman becomes pregnant, she, she, she's expecting now and, and she, she changes some things. She makes room in her life for the baby that's coming and, and she, she'll take a room and paint it and put the, all the furniture in there and, 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 and get it decorated and get ready for that baby. And, and when we begin to expect something in our life, we begin to prepare our life for whatever we're expecting. And not only that, but, but the, the mom-to-be will change what she's eating. She'll change what she's consuming because she wants that baby to be healthy and strong. And a lot of times when we're expecting God to do something great in our lives, we, we change what we consume. We no longer consume as much Netflix as we used to. We no longer consume as much secular music as we used to. We no longer consume the gossip that we used to to partake of. We push all that stuff aside and we start partaking of worship every day and worship music over our lives and we start partaking of prayer more often and we start partaking of the word more often. We start feeding ourselves and consuming the things that build faith and, and build our expectation and help us draw closer to the Lord and learn what he's, and, and make room for what we're expecting him to do in our lives our sleep patterns change because we're expecting something our prayer lives change because we're expecting something our our study lives change because we're expecting something because we expect God to do something great in our lives and and look at what this lady did next because she was not even supposed to be around other people 
But she went into a crowd, and no doubt the people in that crowd knew who she was because the communities were not that big back then, and they all knew one another. And, but she went in the crowd, and people knew who she was, and she, no doubt some people were looking at her going like, why are you here? You're sick. You're not even supposed to be around us. In fact, when you go out in public, you're supposed to shout unclean. But she, she set aside the religious system to push into God because she expected something different. She expected God to touch her life and make her whole. So she pushed all that mess aside and said, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think. I'm going after God with everything in me. And if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I'm going to be, I'm going to be transformed. So she pushed past all that stuff to touch him and pulled from him. Pulled from him an anointing. Pulled from him power that healed her body. He didn't even know who she was. He didn't even know uh, that she was coming. He looked around and didn't even know who did that. But someone wandered up to him and he's just walking through a crowd and pulled virtue from him that healed them. We can do the same thing. The Bible tells us, Jesus said to us as people, as men, of, men and women of God, that you will do greater things than I do. So the things that I do, you will do, and even greater than, than what I do, you will do. So if that's the case, then, then people should be grabbing the hem of our garment and getting healed. But there, there's a problem, though. We, we don't expect it. We don't come expecting the, you know, the, the Americanized diluting of, 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 of Christianity in the church is alarming. It's like I talked about a while ago. We have to have man back up what God said to, to believe it. But there's been a diluting of a man of God. When, let, me, let, let, let me help you. When, you. when you want something from God, you begin to expect and you change your daily behavior for one. But when you come to church, you change the way you come. Because you begin to expect. If Jesus said, you will do what I do, and greater things than I do, you will do. Talking to people who minister. When a man of God stands in this platform and proclaims a word, you can, you can pull from him virtue. You can pull from him power. If you come to church needing a word, needing a word from God, it really don't matter what the man up here says. There is a voice behind our voice that will speak to your spirit and transform your life. So if you need a word from God, you come expecting and it pulls on us. It pulls an anointing from us that, that helps break yoke and lift burden. But when we come not expecting and it's just church as normal, then, then there's nothing pulling out of us. There's no, no virtue flowing. And, and sometimes, we, you know, it's like standing up here and, and trying to, hey, come on, get with me. Come on, go with me. Because we can feel it when someone's pulling on you as a minister. You, you feel power going from you. Like right now, I can tell there's some hungry people in this room because I, I feel a river flowing from my stomach, from my belly. But because of your hunger, not because I'm something great, because you know what? We, we're all great in God's eyes. Lo God loves us all the same, and he cares about us all the same. You can not only pull virtue from me, but when you stand with a prayer partner, you can pull virtue from them. You can pull the power of God through them, through your expectation. You can pull the power of God through another, just another believer in your household. You could stand with your wife, even though the familiarity is there, and, and pull the power of God through your wife or through your children because you expect something great. You look past the person into the God that's in the person that can transform your life. Let me help you with some practical things. When you come to church, come early. This is how you come expecting. I'm, I'm always about practicality. I'm like, how, how can I practically do this? Well, for one, you, you change your daily walk. Uh, you worship every day. You're in the Word every day. You're seeking God every day. You're crying out to God. You're spending time with Him, allowing Him to speak to you. That's, that's your daily. But when you come to church, you come early. You come to serve. You come to help other people because the Bible says those that refresh others shall themselves be refreshed. So as we're refreshing other people, God will refresh us because he's true to his word. 
So we come to serve and we come to help others. And then we come into a service, not just sitting here hoping they sing my favorite song and hoping they entertain me to a place where I I feel like maybe raising a hand or I maybe feel like tapping my foot or, you know, something like. No, I come in with a praise on my lips already. I come in with thanksgiving in my heart already. And I raise my hands and worship God because I love him and because I'm so caught up with him already and I worship and then when the word comes I'm on the edge of my seat with with something taking notes or typing it in so that I can if I hear a word and as I hear a word from God I can make that part of my life I can write it down and then I can go back and I can talk to my my friends in my life group about it because I'm in a life group I'm doing life with people who can help hold me accountable and who can help move me forward and spur me on toward good works like the Bible says do so I'm doing it. I'm hanging on the words that are being spoken from the platform because I believe that the words that are being spoken are the very words of God. Because I can promise you this, in this church, I know in this church, the men who stand in this platform, the men and women who stand in this platform and speak, spend hours alone with God. Hours trying to hear, listening to the Lord. What do you want us to say, God? How do you want us to say it? What do you want us to communicate? And God speaks to us. So when we stand to deliver, don't just look at a man delivering a speech. We, you can get that anywhere. Tony Robbins can give you that. But what Tony Robbins can't give you, he, it, it, well, I don't know. He might can. I don't know if he's saved or not. But a, a preacher can give you over a motivational speaker is, is, is God's power and his presence if you come expecting. Yeah. And that's what transforms your life. You respond and receive prayer when prayer is offered. You respond uh, in the message. You help the preacher preach by going, yeah, yeah, all that. That's, that's right, man. Now you can tell when people are expecting because they're, they're with it. They're hearing and they're receiving. Remember, your miracle is connected to your expectation. Now, moving on to my second, my last scripture and, and uh, to give you a little hope and... Uh, Don't get any hope because I'm only halfway done. So, Um, (laughs) At least we're halfway there. (laughs) Um, In Acts 3, 2 through 8, it says, A man crippled from birth was carried to the temple gate. Now, Now, before we leave the prior one, that lady's expectation is what got her healed. And that lady's expectation pulled healing power from Jesus, and Jesus didn't even know who had done it. You can pull things from men and women of God. You can pull the power of God through men and women of God by your expectation. By your expectation. So back to Acts 3.2. Now a man crippled from birth was carried to the gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave his attention expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk, and it goes on to talk about in the Scripture, he went in the temple leaping, jumping, and praising God, whereas a few minutes before, his feet didn't even work. This man was crippled from birth. He'd never, he, never, he never knew anything but being crippled. He never knew any different. His entire life was dependent upon a system of belief that just accommodated his daily needs. Because in the system of uh, the religious system of the time, there was, uh, he, he was allowed to come to the gate and beg alms from people because that was part of the system. And in the system, good religious people would give him money and and would help him uh, 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 with his daily needs. So that that religious system uh, accommodated his daily needs. It fed him every day. And and religion can only feed you a little bit. It's not going to sustain you for life. And it's not going to change who you are. It can make you feel a little better about who you are. But it's still religion and not, not a relationship with Jesus. It was an old system. It's the old system that Jesus, Jesus fulfilled and moved it into a relationship instead of religion. A religious system will, will give you a form of godliness but deny the power. A religious system will say, hey, you need to line up by these set of rules, but there's no power to get you there. This man was crippled, and every day he could, he could receive something that might help him a little bit, but 
<clears throat> and he received nothing that changed him from who he was to who he needed to be in Christ. And that's what religion does. Religion will bring us in church every week and we'll leave feeling a little better, but it didn't really change us. But a relationship with Jesus will transform us at our core. It'll transform who we are. Religion is an empty shell of what a relationship with Jesus is really all about. You know, religion does very few things. The only thing religion will do is is like the man sat at the gate and he had a cup and, and he, they could come by every day and drop a few coins in his cup just to give him a little something to make it to the end of the day. And, and that's what religion does. All religion does is help you check some boxes to make you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I came to church twice this month and I got a coin in my cup because, so I feel a little better today because I told God what I needed him to do for me today and I didn't really spend any time listening to him or allowing him to speak into my life or change me, but I told him what I needed, and uh, so I got a coin in my cup. I, I read a daily, a daily bread, you know, one little bitty scripture, and, and you know, I, so I feel better about myself. I pulled it out a little loaf of bread up, up by the sink, and, you know, I read a little daily bread, and I put it back, and I feel better about myself because I, 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 I did my religious duty today, and I checked the box of my religious duty of, 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 of reading a scripture, and I feel better. So it gave me a little coin in my cup, but... But it, it, it don't transform me at, who, at my core. It just, it just caters to my, my want and my desire to go to heaven and to think that I'm okay before the Lord. And, and then I, I got a little fire insurance, not, gonna burn, not going to hell, I'm going to go to heaven. Gives me a coin in my cup. But the problem with a coin in your cup is it really don't change who you are. And the problem with a coin in your cup is it, don't, it doesn't give you a relationship with the creator of the world and the creator of the universe. But it can... It, it, it acts like a vaccination. A vaccination gives you just a little bit of the flu so that you can, you are impervious to the real thing. And that's what religion does. It gives you a little bit so that you don't, you don't give, you don't, you don't step into the real thing. Makes you feel a little better about who you are, but it doesn't really change who you are at your core because you don't have relationship you know, we come to God, we tip God instead of tithe. That's, you know, we'll put a 20 in the offering plate, hopefully I'll buy my way to heaven, you know. Instead of just getting in his word and doing what his word says and allowing him to transform us at our core, we, we have a religious system because I want to make it to heaven and, 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 and it makes me feel better and I think I can check those boxes and when I stand at the gates, it's all about me and God, I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this when it's not about that at all because in the Bible, Jesus said that there, there are those that will stand before him that said, I cast out demons in your name, I heal the sick in your name, I, I did all this in your name, and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. That is one of the most sobering scriptures in the New Testament to me. Because people can walk in a church all day long and have a form of godliness, but deny his power access to their life. And if the power of God does not have access to heal who we are and transform us into who he's called us to be, then we have only a form of godliness. You know, coins run out every day, but relationship lasts for a lifetime. Religion has a form of godliness, but denies God's power access to our lives. When you have a relationship, the ritual takes care of itself. You know, we, we can either perform by a set of rules and say, this is my standard, but we, or we can have a relationship with Jesus and all those just things kind of happen because he does them inside of us. But I want you to look back at the scripture of what happened when relationship came on the scene. Because religion walked by this man every day dropping coins in his cup. But when men with a relationship came on the scene, they healed the man at his core. They healed his problem. They said, silver and gold have a number. What I have, I give. And, and, and they gave him. Because what a relationship in our lives do, it heals the broken. It helps those that can't help themselves. The sick get better. Lives are transformed. The Holy Spirit begins to heal inner hurts. And what we have, we can give to others. The man looked at him with expectation. And he had expectation that was here. But Peter said, you know what? You have expectation and faith. I can work with that. You believe God every day to meet your daily need. But I'm about to give you something that will allow you to believe God at a higher level and heal your real problem and get you to a place in him that you can, you can fend for yourself. That you don't have to depend on the relationship of other men with God. You have your own relationship with him. This is how we make the word part of our lives. 
Because that's what happens in a relationship. Jesus becomes part of who we are. His word becomes part of who we are. In a relationship with Jesus, there is expectation of divine encounters that give us the experience that we need to make the word real in our lives. You know, I mean, like in a marriage, there's, there's an expectation of divine encounters. Let me hear the married folks. I, I, well, why not hear nobody? I heard a couple of men go, yeah, but that's all I heard. What, what's up with that? I don't need to be some divine encounters going on in a marriage, but when that happens, see, we're referred to as the bride of Christ. So what happens when there's one of those encounters in a marriage? There, there is a seed planted that in nine months becomes a baby becomes something that's real in this world. So you can take that to your relationship with Jesus and to say that when I have intimacy with him, when I'm in the word, when I'm in prayer, when I worship him and I'm intimate with my savior, his word is deposited because his word is is talked about as a seed. It's deposited in my life that pretty soon it's going to grow up and and, and it's going to produce fruit and it's going to become real in my life and part of who I am. That's how we get the word to become part of who we are. Because I'm going to tell you something, we can't give what we don't have. If you don't have healing, you can't give healing. If you don't have freedom, we can't give freedom. But if we have it, if God has healed us and delivered us and set us free, then we can walk into someone else's life that is broken and destitute and don't know how they're going to make it and grab them by the hand and say, get up and walk. We're going to help you. And that's what we're here for. In In the religious system, performance was the currency for the miraculous. In a religious system, there was a set of rules that you could go to the priest and they, they would tell you, go do this, 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 and this, and you should be okay. But that woman had gone through all that and was not okay. In a religious system, it's, hey, you perform by this set of rules, you'll make heaven, you'll be okay, your life will be all right. And those produce some of the maddest Christians I've ever seen in my life because they're just performing to a set of rules and don't have the inner power and the inner relationship that will transform them and allow love to flow through them. And I'd be mad, too, if I didn't have it. <laughs> if I had just performed by a set of rules that, and didn't have any kind of relationship, I'd be mad also. But in a relationship with Jesus, in a relationship system, expectation of our faith is the currency for the miraculous. An expectation of what God is going to do and what God is doing in my life right now. That is the currency for the miraculous, to see God move in a miraculous way. But I'm going to tell you something. Familiarity can diffuse expectation and faith. Because those things that, that become familiar to us, then they become common. And when something's common, it moves from being something that was revered and holy to, to being something that's just expected to be there and And we begin to feel entitled that, well, you you should just do this for me anyway. We begin to be entitled. And we lived in an entitled society. (laughs) And and if you don't think we do, just just, uh, next time your cell phone don't work, how mad do you get? (laughs) When 15, 20 years ago, we didn't even have them. (laughs) But now we're entitled that it's, it's got to work. You know, Wi-Fi. Why don't this place have Wi-Fi? What, what's, what's your password? Hey, I'm entitled to the password. Well, no, not really. What used to be a privilege and what used to be something that excited us now is just commonplace and we no longer revere it. Familiarity can diffuse your expectation. If you don't believe it, look at the scripture in Mark 6, 1 through 5. Jesus went to his hometown and because they knew who he was, and and I'm not going to read the entire scripture, but there's there's about three verses here where they just begin to badger him and and they say, you know, where where did this man get all these things? They, you know, what what's this wisdom that that he's been giving? Uh, you know, uh, isn't this isn't this Joseph's son? Isn't this Mary's son? Wasn't he a carpenter just a few years ago? Isn't he just a man? And the Bible says he could not do any miracles there. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. 
and lack of expectation. He was amazed at it because he was common to them. They watched him grow up and they looked at just a man. They looked at him as just a man. Now let me help you. Let me, let, let me, let me help all of us. Our pastor and our pastors are great guys. They love to hang out. I love to hang out with people and get to know people and, and be friendly and we're friendly and we're friends and, and all that good stuff. But I, 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 there's, there's a danger there because I'll just give, give you mine and Pastor Greg's relationship. Pastor Greg and I are friends. We go fishing together. We hang out together. We do things together. We cut up together. We have fun together. But there's a danger on my side that I can become so familiar with him that I don't hear the voice of God through him. That when I sit out here and I listen, I, I look at him as, oh, that's, that's just Greg. That's just Greg. You know, we, we were cutting up about this earlier. And, and, but I, if I'm not careful to keep him in a place of reverence in my life as a mouthpiece of God, I'll never hear God speak through him. And when I need God to do something miraculous in my life, I'll not be able to stand before him and say, I need you as the priest of this house, as the, as the, as the apostle of this house. I need you to pray for me and as an elder here to get this stuff off of me and my family. I will not be able to receive that from him because I see him as just another man. The scripture's there. There are weeks of study that you can do on expectation, and I encourage you to do it. Because this, this is a key. This is a key that will release the miraculous into your life. Now, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray over us. Just remember, your, your miracle is directly connected to your expectation. And I want to pray right now that God shift something in the heavens and in our minds. The Bible says that a stronghold is, is a way of thinking that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And, uh, and some of us in this room today have operated out of a stronghold of familiarity and a stronghold of a lack of expectation. Today, God is breaking that down. And I encourage you to dig into his word and erect a new way of thinking. Father God, I ask right now. God, I ask that, you know, if we need to repent, we repent. If we need to turn away from things, we turn away from them. Ways of thinking, ways of familiarity, things that have kept us from receiving from you, I ask you to expose it to us now, Lord. Speak to each one of us in our hearts and our minds. And God, we ask you to forgive us. We ask, Lord, that that you would cleanse us of all unrighteousness, of everything that keeps us from being able to move deeper into your presence and closer to you and, and understand you better and receive healing and deliverance and strength and wisdom and the things that we seek you for, God. And Lord, if we've treated holy things as common, please forgive us and convict us. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear your Holy Spirit speaking to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I believe that the Lord is speaking to each of us now. And I know it's a little heavy, but that's okay. That's okay. I, would lo I love for people to come to church and leave going like, well, I, I, hey, I need, to, I need to look at this. I need to think about this. But there are people in this room right now that you may not even know Jesus, or you may be checking those religious boxes and, and thought you were okay, but it's all about you and not about him. There's no real relationship. Well, we're all going to say a prayer together out loud so you can give your life to Jesus today, and you can start that relationship with him. So uh, right now, let's all pray this out loud. Dear Jesus, I give you my life. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I confess that Jesus is Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, if, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe, maybe you've just been checking those religious boxes thinking you were okay, but you realized today you weren't okay, 
and you gave your life to Christ today, I'm going to count to three. And when I hit three, I just want you to raise those hands high, raise them high and keep them up. I just, we just want to celebrate with you. We don't want to call you out. But when I count to three and I hit three, raise those hands high. One, two, three. Raise them. Raise them. Got you. Got you. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Anybody else? Come on. Raise those hands high. Lift them high. Got you. Got you. Anyone else? Raise them high. Can't really see in the balcony, so I, I, you know, I'm believing that God's moving on lives. Well, what I want you to do right now, we're all, we're, we're all about to stand up, and, and our prayer partners are going to come forward. And those of you who gave your life to Christ for the, for today, um, I, I want you to come talk to a prayer partner. Come talk to them. We want to just help you as you start your walk and your relationship with Jesus Christ and, 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 and help you along that path. So let's all stand really quick. Service is not over, so let all movement be forward and not backwards. Let's, let's treat this moment as holy because people's lives are being changed. And if you need prayer for anything, if you just want someone to agree with you in prayer and you're believing God for great things and you want someone to agree with that today, now's the time to come forward. And, we're, and Pastor Michael will be back out in just a minute.